Badger Dow recently revealing details of how it was hacked for $120 million. The DeFi platform saying an application platform that runs on its cloud network was the vector for the attack. Joining us now to discuss further is Jonathan Manzi, CEO of Beyond Protocol, a blockchain project that focuses on trust and security. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for coming on the show. So perhaps we can open up with what made Badger Dow vulnerable to an attack. What happened here? Well, BadgerDAO is a terrific Web3 application, and unfortunately, Web2 went awry as it often does with kind of archaic technology as it relates to authentication and identification. And there was a vector for attack that was not related to smart contracts in Web3, but Web2, specifically injection of code into uh, and on top of a web surface, which essentially had uh, bad actors run off with $120 million. Not anything against Web3 tech, but just deficiencies and in problems in integrating and in bridging Web2 to Web3. So Jonathan, um, uh, first of all, good morning. The, what was interesting, I, I, you know, reading the blog post from, uh, from Badger, uh, they said that it was an unauthorized users were able to create accounts on BadgerDAO. So how what what happened there? How exactly did that happen? And, and that exposed them to that sort of vulnerability. And it seems to have been going on for weeks, correct? I mean, what, how did it happen in that regards? How did, were they able to create the accounts? And how was it able to go on for so long? Yeah, so the, the way right now, we'll, we'll, to go back to the kind of transition that I was discussing between Web 2 and Web 3, Web3 kind of being this on-chain, everyone can track and see transparently what's going on. There's an integration on the front end on Web2, meaning that you as a wallet holder, let's say on BadgerDAO, can opt into certain actions happening. People can, on your behalf, or programs and smart contracts on your behalf, send your money um, or coins to another wallet and as it relates to the months prior, weeks prior activity that was unauthorized and led to this exploit, the uh, bad actor essentially was able to go into the layer that integrated this Web2 interface with Web3, it's called Cloudflare, and penetrate it with unauthorized access, basically pretending that they were engineers and developers that needed API access to Cloudflare from BadgerDAO's team. They, in fact, were not. It seems to be a deficiency, as BadgerDAO has uh, said in their community posts, in what Cloudflare had put together as authentic authentication into being able to get into the API knitting um, on, on their side. And what you end up happening is bad actors that are supposed to be BadgerDAO people um, having access to this place on the the bridge from web 2 to web 3 where users interact and basically as those users are interacting deciding that they could transfer their money from um, one location to another all of a sudden the bad actor comes in to the website and says all right type in your info here uh it looks like the money's supposed to be transferred where it's where, where you think it is but it's actually going to my wallet so it all kind of comes back to the weeks prior, there was um, uh, unauthorized access, someone who purported to be a Badger Dow engineer getting access into um, Cloudflare. And then from Cloudflare, the vector of attack, being able to then make these calls out to the website. And on the website, users who you know were experiencing these kind of hacks come in or these these messages come in saying, oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, it, it's OK for for uh, this money to be uh, potentially sent here at some future date and time when, in fact, that that wasn't um, what, what they wanted. So, Jonathan, how do you prevent something like this from happening in the future? Do you need KYC requirements, more personal identification requirements? Is that even possible with DeFi? So, yeah, no, there, there is a bright future moving forward, and it, it relates to being able to go to these problems of unauthorized access and bring them on chain. Uh, right now, they're off chain. So the guy who or girl who penetrated the BadgerDAO 
um, API uh, profiles on Cloudflare, um, they they were kind of using things like two factor authentication. We've learned that the two factor authentication for some of those reports might not have even uh, been in place properly. But th- this can be prevented if the authentication and the verification happens on chain, not kind of in this way that is happening with Web 2.0 with devices uh, being used uh, moments later to authenticate. But let's say, for example, a technology beyond protocol has developed when the device of the person is that's supposed to have the API access, only when that device signs the transaction with its microchips and everyone in the environment, all the concerned stakeholders can vouch for the fact that that signature is in fact the device holders, then the transaction moves forward. This is a a way to make it probabilistically impossible for there to be a DeFi exploit. That's technology, for example, beyond protocols developing. But it's these types of technologies that say, look, Web3 is the future. And we've got to, when we're bridging from Web2 to Web3, we've got to tighten things up. It can't be such a patchwork. This is how you solve the problem. Jonathan, just to follow up on that, so you talked about some things that can be done on the technology side, but what about on the regulatory side? So these kind of hacks definitely spook governments. um, And, you know, is there anything that can be done from the regulatory side to prevent hacks like this going forward? I know with DeFi, it's even more challenging. Yeah, you know, the regulatory side, what what it seems like... um, is the role of good of good regulation is to kind of look back at what has happened and learn from uh, things that might not have been so great, learn from things that do look good and promising and have been great, and then propose a framework moving forward that can bring out the best features and uh, the best um, uh, kind of wisdom of, of new technology, innovation. And as it relates to you know, DeFi, there's some amazing things that DeFi un- unleashes. Uh, there, there's there's ways um, uh, agencies that provide regulation can integrate with it and provide stronger regulation with it. And what they could do is look at how to put down a framework, a technological framework, where there are guards and traffic lights set up um, on this road from Web 2 to Web 3, so things like this don't happen. And there's certainly a lot of great innovation in the world right now that it makes this immediately possible right now related to device-to-device communication and authentication. 